guys, in this psycholinguistics video I'll be talking about the effects of word recognition in bilinguals. I'll have based myself mostly on the article and guest lecture by Professor Briesbach, and if you want to check out the article, there's a reference to it in the description box below. Traditionally, bilinguals were considered to have two separate lexicons in their head, sort of like two separate language-specific dictionaries in your head. The revised hierarchical model by Kroll and Stewart is probably the most well-known and explains this traditional view, but there are some faults in it. One, experiments have shown us that there are in fact no separate lexicons. All the words of all the languages you know are stored together. Two, in this model there's also no role for semantics in word recognition, whereas semantics actually plays a pretty big role. One, some proof of why we should have a huge shared dictionary for all the languages we know are the following experiments. The first experiment that proves this is an experiment done by Dijkstra, Timmermans and Schriefers, and it's a go-no-go -no -go task, which means that you click a button when you think the word is a Dutch word, and you don't click it when you think it isn't. Quite simple, really. In this particular task, they presented Dutch-English bilingual participants with a list of words that existed both in English and in Dutch. The words had the same spelling, but different meanings. Words that have the same spelling, but different meanings across languages are called interlingual homographs. The participants would respond slower to a Dutch word if the word was more frequent in their second language, which was English. This is what the experimenters called being blinded by your other language. The second experiment that proves that there is a shared dictionary for all the languages you know is one done by Van Asse. He proved that being bilingual can help you recognize words a lot faster. This is particularly the case for interlingual cognates. These are words that have the same spelling and the same meaning across languages like film, which means the exact same thing in Dutch as it does in English. They discovered that bilinguals will recognize these words a lot faster than monolinguals will. Two, some proof that semantics plays a pretty big role in recognizing words can be found in the following experiments. You probably all remember the Stroop interference effect that I talked about in the second cycle linguistics video, which indicated that you automatically activate the meaning of words and you can't turn that off. This is kind of similar. Bowers proved that it's more difficult to say that howl isn't an animal because it contains the word owl than to say it isn't a body part. Vice versa, he proved that it's more difficult to say that warm isn't a body part because it contains the word arm than to say it isn't an animal. Another experiment that proves this is the one that Rod did, and he proved that it's a lot more difficult to say that leotard isn't an animal because it's automatically associated with leopard. In another experiment, they proved that when you see a word, you automatically sound out all the letters of that word in all the languages that you know. They first tried this out within one language and they discovered that if you see the word blood preceded almost invisibly by the nonsense word blood, you'll recognize it a lot faster. And then they did an experiment with Dutch-French bilinguals. In Dutch, the letters O-E sound the same as the letters O-U in French. In the experiment with Dutch-French bilinguals, they let the French word sur be preceded by a Dutch nonsense word sur, which doesn't exist at all. They discovered, because you automatically sound out all the letters, that the bilinguals will recognize the French word a lot faster because of this. Of course, no effect was found with the monolinguals. The conclusion, really, is that when you read a word, you activate it in all the languages that you know, and you even sound out all the letters in all the languages languages you know. This is also the reason why people who speak multiple languages would have more difficulty understanding someone in a noisy situation. When there's a lot of noise, the more languages you know, the more difficulty you'll have filtering out the input. These are just a few examples of why there aren't two separate lexicons in your head and why there isn't a specific language switch. If you want more examples, you should definitely check out the article because they list a whole lot more. There's a reference to the article in the description box down below. So this was the end of the third psycholinguistics video. Only one more to come about neurocognitive syndromes and I'll only be talking about aphasia. So I hope you like this and I hope to see you guys soon. Peace out! I did not hear a thing.